When we get something that comes in here like a dock float or a piece of furniture or a, another industrial item that just has a different geometry, that excites me and I think that excites everybody that works here. Rotational molding is really a process for really larger, mostly hollow parts. Rotational molding has a lot of benefits. Price point or your barriers to entry are much lower. And so for us, that a lot of our customers that come to us are saying, hey, we want to try this out. From a rotational standpoint, wow, you guys are 20% of what an injection molded part would be. And for our volumes, that makes a lot of sense. Most people don't understand how long the rotational molding process takes. From a volume standpoint, it's not a high volume process, but that one machine will have arms, and on those arms will be multiple tools. So over the course of an hour, though, you can get a half dozen, dozen parts off the machine. By the time a part is molded, it's a complete hour later almost before you're actually pulling the parts. The powder goes into the mold, and it goes into the oven for 20 minutes and rotates, and it rotates in pre-cool, and it rotates in the cooler, and then it comes back to the machine, obviously still warm, but a molded part that's formed inside the mold, and then we pull it. We have the 200, the 300, and the 400. The 200 mainly uh, molds our smaller lockers and pallets and things like that. Our 300 does a lot of our bigger items, and then the 400 runs a lot of laundry carts and things like that. We mold the parts, they process them through secondary, whether it be uh, stenciling, attaching pallets to them, trimming them out, making them look pretty uh, for the customers, and then, then it goes to shipping from there. The quality of our molds is, is probably the biggest driver to producing good quality parts. So before a mold goes up, it goes through our maintenance shop and we have a process tech that, that will make sure that mold is ready, all the bolts are put in place, the parting lines are clean, the vent tubes are clear, and that mold's ready to go when it goes up on the machine. We're constantly looking for ways to improve our training and our documentation and work instructions that drive our operators to you know, stay within that process and stay locked in every day. Those are the things that on the platforms and up at the machines themselves that we're doing every day to try to improve. We'll take on those difficult jobs. We'll take on those custom molds that require the extra attention and that extra mile of effort. And I think we have the team to do that. We have enough machines and capacity to offer contract molding services to other clients that are looking for somebody to mold their parts for them. Whether that's a uh, a new part that they're developing or it's a, uh, an existing part that's being transferred from another molder or it's a transition from a different molding process uh, to rotational molding. There's a lot of things that we can do internally with our engineering services to develop that product to make it work for the rotational molding process. What we've learned over the years is extremely valuable. We're well positioned to, to grow with other industries and grow in our market. Who's FiberTech in the future? It's really a one-stop shop from everything from that person that says, hey, I just have a material handling application, to somebody that says, hey, I'm really thinking outside of the box. Can you partner with me to make that so I can really wow somebody? Partnering with them bringing that same customer focus, that value products together, and having that flexibility in our manufacturing process for us is very competitive and allows us to really meet the needs of our customers.